Hello, I'm Rajesh Merchandani and thanks for joining me for this edition of the CGD podcast. Now, with the World Bank and IMF meetings having just taken place in Lima, Peru, uh, there's been lots of talk of sustainable development, economic growth, financial stability. So we thought it might be a perfect time to look back at an innovation that has been a success in helping many more people access the financial system and as a result in promoting development. M-Pesa is the digital platform where you don't require a personal bank account, but you can transfer money, pay for goods and services using just your mobile phone. When it was introduced in Kenya, the governor of the Central Bank of Kenya at that time was Chukuna Ndungu. He's also now a member of a CGD high-level task force on financial inclusion. Recently, he joined me here in the CGD podcast studio to talk about M-Pesa, and I started off by asking him to remind us exactly how it works. M-Pesa tells you that you can actually, you don't have to belong, you don't have to open a bank account, but you can use your phone as a bank account, as an account where you can actually use, uh, 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 transfer money. Kenyans started uh, pay, uh, transferring airtime to each other, so it is it followed the same thing. The British government and Vodafone and Safaricom realized there's something here they can develop. The British government gave a million pounds to develop the product. But what does it do? You don't have to have a bank account. Since you are registered with your SIM card, you register as your SIM card to actually transfer money and receive money. But that time, we argued that it's actually the best way to access financial services because it doesn't matter where you are, any time in the night, all day. That's the, start, the starting point. But in 2007, I argued that this is going to be a platform of a menu of financial services. And today, it is a platform. You can transfer money. You can actually pay for goods and services. You can actually now transfer the money from your SIM card to a direct uh, savings account mm -hmm. in a bank in the same platform. You can withdraw in the same way. Let's go back to 2007, mm -hmm. when you were the governor. Yeah. Uh, and then this thing took off. Mm -hmm. It must have represented to the governor of the Central Bank of Kenya a disruptive force yeah. because it takes control out of money supply and money in the economy out of your hands. No. That is where the mistake comes in. Okay, correct. It me. actually, let me say, Africa, the biggest problem in Africa, uh, two problems. One, we have segmented markets. And two, we have informal markets. So essentially, when I went to the central bank, the first thing I realized is that 15% of the currency was outside the banking sector. Now, tell me, how can you run monetary policy when 15% of the currency is outside the banking sector? What does it respond to? Well, there are so many other aspects you can categorize it, but the most important thing is that monetary policy works through signals and it works through money which is inside the banking system. Mm. So essentially, the first impact of M-Pesa is to bring money outside the banking system into the banking system. But it's not regulated in the same way as it is banks. regulated. Let's, let's, let's be clear. What has happened is that when you go to the telecom agent with your cash to put it in your SIM card, you're actually bringing cash from outside the banking system into the banking system because the moment it enters into the M-Pesa account, it simultaneously hits a bank account called trust account. This is so where all the money is kept. Now, that's yeah. where all the money is yeah. kept. So all of a sudden, and you can see they have provided uh, evidence to this, is that currency outside the banking sector dropped significantly. So essentially, it's not issuing money. It's just converting cash into electronic units of money, which is stored in the bank account. So in a sense, what happened is the first six months of M-Pesa, the disruption is actually to bring currency into the market, into the banking system. So very, very f swiftly. So were but, you in favour of the peso all, the, the, all along? Because I read that you had your reservations about it to begin with. I had no reservations. It is the banks, and mostly Kenyan ba uh, global banks, that had reservations that there would be a currency, there would be a crisis, because liquidity was shifting away from the other banks to the bank that was holding the platform. Over time, subsequently, we we, we also made sure that twenty five percent. Of it, we have to distri distri distribute the, the platforms, and today we have five platforms. So essentially, that particular time, the platform there was one platform, but they feared that liquidity would shift to that platform. But it was a pay, pay cash in cash out platform, uh -huh. so money was not being there. So what I told some banks is that you are the one punishing your clients, your customers, because they are taking one trip to the bank, 
to withdraw cash, and another trip to the telecom agent to transform that cash into electronic units of money. So what was the solution? I told banks, integrate with M-Pesa so that I can use the phone, get into my account, draw down from my account in the bank to my account in the M-Pesa. And I don't have to take a trip to the bank. That is what subsequent years everybody came down to. So the reservations was not with me. The reservations was with other banks that didn't have the platform and felt that there was going to be, uh, there, there was, they were going to be disadvantaged. In fact, they told me, plainly and openly, even including my staff in the central bank, that I was going to face a banking crisis. Mm. So I told the banks, you are the ones who are going to face a crisis because you are punishing your customers. And told my colleagues who are, who, are, who are criticizing me that you are the one who is going to face a crisis because of the fear of the unknown. So the point is that this is not an individual's bank account, but it's one big account where all the money goes into and is paid out from. Yeah. So yeah. that's why it doesn't, people don't have to yeah. have bank accounts to operate in Yeah, yeah. It's, in fact, you can call it a, 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 a payments platform if you want, where it is a solution where it's cash in, cash out. So essentially, many people, many, so many people with the uh, M-Pesa accounts joined into a trust account. That trust account now forms a platform for pay in, pay out. But because the, the, the value is stored in that account and also stored in your SIM card, then you can see that the link is uh, quite clear that you can actually transact. What it will be doing is actually to move your money from your SIM card to somebody's SIM card if you're transferring to um, somebody else, because you can transfer money to someone if you know their bank account, if, if you know their telephone account, mm. yeah. You go to the shopkeeper and say, how much money do I owe? You transfer straight. How, what is your number? How much do I owe? You transfer straight. So essentially, all of a sudden, people are using less and less cash. Why don't all banks operate a similar system now? You know, we've seen some banks in America start using yeah. it as a way of conveni extra convenience for consumers. Mm. But it, it does represent a threat to traditional banks. It, it does not present a threat because essentially you, you, it is an investment issue. But don't forget, it's not free. But if you don't have to have a bank account, you haven't got to have the fixed costs of a bank account, yeah. you haven't got to perhaps pay to open a bank account. Yeah, yeah, but that platform has to be paid for. It has to be invested in. It's not free. In fact, subsequently, the second generation, we have seen that the, the platforms became more expensive because you, you now want to go into another platform, not necessarily where it is a payment solution, but it's also you want now to pull those people who have now entered the banking, the banking sector, who did not have bank accounts, can now have a bank account. It's like reverse engineering. They get, got in through their fo mobile phone. That mobile phone can be used into a savings account. But there are investments in the bank for, for you to do that. Even to, uh, let's say, to get um, uh, uh, hooked into the M-Pesa uh, network ecosystem, that is, you, 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 you have customers who have M-Pesa accounts, but they would like to draw down from their bank account into their M-Pesa account. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have a, a platform yourself, but they can actually be drawing down. So essentially what you're telling someone is that you don't have to come to the bank, you can actually draw down from wherever you are. So essentially you are linked. So even that was an investment because it's a software. Essentially, for those people who could not have the platform, they decided the best thing is not to lose in the ecosystem. Yeah, but who's then paying for that investment? Do of they course, get passed on the, to the customers. In the long run, yes, but in the in the short term, in the short term, the the, 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 the banks had to pay for that investment. But if the, the, the one of the points of Impesa, mm -hmm. and then the applications of Impesa, you know, yeah. this idea of drawing down from a bank account into the Impesa system, if one of the purposes of that is to bring more poor people into the financial system yeah. and help them. Mm -hmm. then if they're being charged with that service, it's not helping them. Uh, yes. Let, let's look at it. What was the alternative? Give it to them for free. How? Support it through the central no, bank. No, no, no. I, I don't think that would be feasible. You see, you, the, the point, what, what we're really saying is that uh, this, these people were always transacting. It's only that we were using cash or keeping it in unsafe places. But you want to come up with a public policy, how to encourage them to save, how to hook them to get financial services, instant and effective. And how to make money off them and the, doing that. No, no, no. You see, any technology must use, must be paid for, isn't mm. it? Any technology must be paid for. Let me say that if we provided this for free, maybe it will not have worked. Really? But over, yes. How can you, you know, everybody, every, in, 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 in African countries, everybody gets suspicious of the government. Yeah. But let me say, 
So suppose, if you provided suppose it for free, people that, wouldn't have used it because they would have been suppo- suspicious of suppose it. I'm told that, uh, suppose I'm told that this service is free. The first thing is to realize there must be some catch. It is very difficult for central bank to involve itself with uh, payment systems in that way, micro, micro uh, payment, paying for transfers, because essentially central bank is not really a central bank for the people. It's actually uh, like it's a regulator, isn't it? So the most important thing is to wait for the market to innovate and then obviously see how you can guide the market. If it is now a mass market, maybe what the, the central bank can do is actu- actually to provide a, a regulatory environment that reduces the cost of doing business. Now, where were we before that? We had ATMs, but did the central bank really intervene? Then we had checks, every bank can give you a check. Those are payment systems. But they were not very efficient. And sec- second, they were very costly for uh, people who, whom we wanted to access the markets. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the other applications. An offshoot yeah. of M-Pesa is yeah. Mshwari, yeah. which uses the M-Pesa platform mm-hmm. uh, to allow someone to operate a traditional, a more traditional bank account. They can yeah. save and borrow. Yeah. Uh, but that's not been as successful as M-Pesa, though, no, has it? No, you have to understand that it is now you are moving to the next generation. Let's, let's, me, let me start from the very beginning. You have invested in a platform called M-Pesa. Mm-hmm. It's a payment solution, okay? Everybody brings their money. They can transfer. They can pay for goods and services. But all of a sudden, we realize that it is actually not affecting the banking intermediation system because the banking intermediation is affected through deposits coming into the bank and which gives the bank capacity, capacity to run in the future, isn't it? Yeah. So all of a sudden then, Started, I, th- I think one of the criticism came from Bill Gates himself. We are doing, you are doing so well with M-Pesa, but look, you are not affecting the intermediation in the banking sector. So it means that people are not saving. You can transform people's life through savings. So over, over, all of a sudden, the bank started developing such a platform. Now it's a platform where you move from the M-Pesa platform to open your own uh, bank account. Let me say, we have. Uh, for example, the M- M- Shuari has more than 10 million accounts since it was started. So the developmental agenda or the developmental dynamics of the M- Shuari accounts and the related developments that have taken place in Kenya today are much more beneficial in terms of welfare, welfare improving. What do you think your experience with M-Pesa can bring to the work that you're doing here on CGD's Task Force on Financial Inclusion? What does it tell you? It's a process. Of course, we were impatient, and I tried to explain in, in CGD, I was trying to explain that how impatient we were, that M-Pesa has come, is successful, then move to the next. Please affect the intermediation process. But what did we want? We wanted financial inclusion. From a broader policy perspective, financial inclusion is very good for fighting poverty sustainably. Mm-hmm. That's a pure developmental item. The second thing is that we wanted financial inclusion for financial development. Again, we have shown, for example, in Kenya and Tanzania, there are data showing that actually financial sector growth has pulled the economy, economic growth with it. Now, when you bring in Mshwari to try and shorten the cycle between savings and investment cycle, that cycle by bringing in affordable credit, then you increase the level of investments. Countries in Africa are driven by investment. Growth in Africa is driven by investment. The next question is, who supplies that investment? One, public sector we know, in terms of the broader picture of lowering transactions cost and enhancing private sector profitability. But now the micro investors are the most important. Let me give you some evidence which you can actually try to relate. In the last uh, eight years, Kenyan banks have covered the East African region. There are 300 branches of Kenyan banks covering the whole of East African region. EAC, that is East African Community plus Sudan, except one outlier uh, branch in Mauritius. But it is East African Community plus Sudan, 300 uh, branch outlets. Now, those are about 11 Kenyan banks. That is one of the things that we wanted to show. Financial inclusion encourages banks to become strong because essentially they increase the number of participants in their market, they increase their deposits. The deposits give them capacity for the future, for future growth. And that is what we wanted. Banks, strong banks are going to weather shocks. But what makes banks strong is actually bringing in people to participate in the banking sector.
Professor Jugunan Dungu, mm -hmm. former governor of the Bank, Central Bank of Kenya. Yeah. It's been fast, fascinating to talk with you on the podcast. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. And nice to be here. And I made those nice points uh, to the CGD, and uh, we are going to produce fantastic report on these issues. And talking about that report, CGD's work on financial inclusion will probably report at the end of this year, maybe early next year. We'll keep you informed about it. Find out more, as always, about all our work on our website, cgdev.com. Dot org. I'm Rajesh Merchandani and join me again with another guest on the CGD podcast next time.